guys it's your girl elizabeth here with another episode of the unconventional african we are getting this season popping pop, pop hey. i have some incredible guest with me like this guy eh? he has been to lagos been to dubai been to uk now in new york i mean it's no place this guy hasn't gone no and he's taking his talents everywhere you must know this guy. If you don't know him, me, I'm here to tell you who he is. My guy, tell the people who you are. Thank you, Shala. It's Afo, a.k.a. Oga Faji. And this who I am, Faji Alaji. You feel me? Hey, <laughs> Faji Alahaji. That means this man get money. He get talent and he get money. I love this guy so much, man. <laughs> I'm so glad that you came on here, man. Like, it's... First of all, it's mind blowing what you're doing. Tell the people what you, you what you've been up to, what you've been working on. Uh, so I've been working on filas, um, Siriki hats. Uh, they're basically our native wear. Uh, we've seen it for years, but now I'm bringing some new flavors to it, some new culture. Yes. Some some, some good um flavors. So yeah, we um I would say we we bring in sizes. We bring in different different fabrics yes. and all that so yeah we moving that is what's up so like how did you even get into because that's a very unconventional thing to do like take something that has been around for centuries that our uncles have been wearing our dads have been wearing right, ah, right, right, and then right. kind of give like small twists to it uh -huh. come on do best for the hats uh -huh. that's what's up man like tell us how you even got started with that what how did that idea even come up yeah so um me and my cousin we was in the basement cliche but um <laughs> yeah i was going through one of my father's closets and I already knew there was, like, hats. But I didn't really dig, like, deep, deep into, like, the stash. And then one time I just, I was just digging. And then I, I looked at my cousin like, yo, niggas will buy this shit. <laughs> that's Everybody what, likes a fashion that's, trend. That's the first thing I said. I was like, yo, people's buying this. And then he was like, yeah, that's a fact. And, like, we already knew, like, it's, people been starting to wear it again. But mm -hmm. it was like... When I ordered my, I ordered my first um, like my first eight hats from Nigeria. My mom thought it wasn't gonna come. When she seen it come in the mail, she was like, Ah, Lagos don't change. Ah, <laughs> Lagos, yeah. So, hey, like, shout out to Lagos, man. Yeah, everything is different right now. Like I just came back from Lagos in March. Um, there's a lot of people our age doing big things. Moving like, and shaking. Yeah, moving so, and shaking. Lagos is different now. It's moving different. and shaking. You know, shout out to Nigeria one time for the one time because. Um, the young people in Nigeria, we really changing the face. And um, anybody problem. who's ever heard anything about Africa, if you heard anything negative, we millennials have started changing the game. So anything that you've heard, just rewrite your script. <laughs> hey! Because we are coming with new flavors. We are really um, moving the country yeah, in a different direction. A it's a new era. Yeah. Like era. all that 419 stuff y'all heard about, it ain't even that kind of time, yeah. man. Like we really are doing things the right way. Yeah, fact, and everything is changing. Yeah, everything For is sure. changing. For sure, and that's another reason why I started um I started this business cuz like I wasn't really looking for like a business in fashion. I was looking for like a way how can I create jobs cuz that's really like the Period. That's really like the thing that's our downfall right now in Nigeria is just like there's no jobs. It's like a lot of people begging. So the only way we could um, create jobs is we create ourselves. Mm -hmm. And the best way for um, like any in, con in economics is like you gotta export no matter Period. what. You gotta export. That's like one of the foundations of how a lot of countries are building. Making it. Yeah, exactly. Like China. Exactly. Like Nigeria, we're importing pencils. Wow. Yeah, that's how that's how it really is. God like, come on. Must, <laughs> ah, if it's pencil, I'll give pencil. Exactly. <laughs> like. So, like, we got to export. So, more jobs we create in Nigeria, the more things we get in, out of Lagos, made in Lagos. Is, that's what the movement is about right now. How many things you get made in Lagos, how many jobs you create, and that's how we move forward. That's what's up. Like, yeah. honestly, and I think that a lot of us young people are creating platforms to where we can give opportunity to other um, people our age or older, like, in the country. But right. I think Africa at large has a big issue with importing things. Like, 
we make our own stuff, but we don't feel like it's good enough to show to other people. And right. once you have confidence in your own thing, people will have confidence in it. If you don't have confidence <laughs> in your own thing, how can I have confidence <laughs> in you? You know what I'm saying? Bad. Like, bad. there's so many things that um, we got in that country. Like, yeah. when you get off the plane and go to Nigeria, the even hit you. <laughs> ah, when that heat hits you, yeah. you know that you have landed. Exactly. But, like, it's also a place of opportunity. And it's crazy right, because sure. in as much as people don't have jobs, they still eating. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it's not like they're the poverty is to the point where they're not they're not gonna make it. But at a point you get tired of hustling, you sure you get. So mm-hmm. like that's how it is there. Everybody's moving and shaking, moving and shaking. We just wanna create more st- stability for them. And I really appreciate the fact that you would even take a business back home. Shout out to you, right, Mr. Unconventional <laughs> African. Yeah. A lot ah. of people were telling me like, Oh, can't you get this made cheaper in Nigeria? I'm I mean in in China. And I'm like, Yeah, of course I get it made cheap in China, but like then my brothers and sisters won't have exactly. any place to go and walk and eat. Exactly. You won't make they keep calling me WhatsApp. Sister, <laughs> be sister. Give me 10 kobo. Give me 10 nine. Thank I you. beg you. I'm tired of yeah. answering the phone. Money ain't growing on trees out here in, in U.S. So. You're working too hard. That's hey, let hard. me tell y'all. Any of y'all unconventional Africans out there that's listening to me, if you want to start a business, you can go ahead and go back to the motherland, start your business. You know what I'm saying? Start your business and make the economy better where you're from. I'm so excited. Like, <laughs> I'm so excited because I, I think that it also changes the trend. Like, um, it's going to make a lot of our young African dudes, like, get back into the traditional native fashion and stuff right, like that. Right, right, right. Which is what's coming back out. So, speaking of trends, like, um, you see how Afrobeats is going. Nuts. <laughs> yeah, nuts. You can be in a, what is it, <laughs> Chinese restaurant. The, if I tell you, say I yeah. love you. I'm like, In what? the malls, everywhere. Everywhere. So, like. Speaking of trends, like, so it always starts off with music. Yeah. And then it transitions to streetwear and then fashion. And then this is how, like, trends go on straight. Like, yeah. how hip-hop started. Hip-hop first started with the music. Facts. And then we got into we got into the fashion. And now all the, the Gucci's and the Louis, now they, they want to put their clothes yeah. on, on our artists. Migos, that, Gucci um, Man, everybody. That, like, that's how it is. Yeah, so like this how this is this the beginning. Our music is gonna pop first and then Shout straight. out to Africa, man. You guys yeah. are doing it big, man. Yeah, facts. So. All you African artists, man, from like Nigeria to Togo to Sierra Leone to Ghana to South Africa. I mean, like all over the country, you people are really working very hard and you're putting us on the map for sure. Um another question I really wanted to ask you was is making these hats or making this fashion trend Mm -hmm. and this business that you started is that the only thing that you're doing because i hear that you're still in school yeah so i'm doing a a master's in business administration uh focusing on like cyber security but um like i really i really wasn't always into cyber security i was always into like economics and um straight entrepreneurship and Mm. within like the finance industry so you came out the womb and money mugu (laughs) Yes, I like it. No, nah, I always like I was always like I studied engineering as an undergrad. Okay. So, um that wasn't something my, f- my parents forced onto me like my parents is like mad like liberal like they're oh, not wow. like the normal like they're not the conventional Nigerian ah, parents. <laughs> we have unconventional yeah. parents too. Yeah, exactly. So like my parents like they they um they very liberal like all of my siblings we was all born in different countries. All, I should say different cities okay. type stuff. So like um my path, like, I really wasn't forced into anything. So, like, I studied engineering. So, like, I was always um, good with, like, manufacturing and, like, putting, like, the pieces to the puzzle and solving problems and stuff like that. So, um, that's kind of uh, along the lines of entrepreneurship as mm-hmm. well. So, just doing that, I was like, you know what, let me just go back to school. Because I took two years off after graduating. Um, I started the brand. And then I was like, you know what, some, some things you can learn in the streets and some things you can't you could learn in school ah that's a lesson yeah. for somebody yeah. out there it's some things you could learn in school and you can't learn in the streets come you know on I mean? come on so like I, I was like you know let me just get this degree it's really awesome of you to even think that way you're kind of like okay i took some time off i started 
what I wanted to do. Now mm-hmm. let me go ahead and go into school where I can learn, like, you know, the logistics of things. Right. Because, like, you're right. There's some things that you're going to learn on YouTube University, but YouTube University can't teach you everything. <laughs> right. I was on YouTube University. like, yo, I, I, when I, like, didn't want to go back to school, I was like, yo, I'm learning everything on YouTube right now. So it's like, well, I'll go back to school. But I was like, you know what? There's some, some things I just got to do. And, like, I just went back to school. So your recommendation is don't put all your eggs in one basket. Yeah, mm-hmm. go to school, but also learn on the outside as well. Yeah, you could do it part-time. Like, you don't got to go full-time. Like, but I want to get it over fast, fast. And I felt like I could do it while pushing the business. So I was like, you know what, let me just go full-time and just finish this out the way. I tip my hat off to you. I really do. Oh, thank you. That's, like, really awesome because it takes a lot of courage and it's a lot of time. Yeah, I, it's, I, time. it's time. It's time. It's so much time, and especially, like, you designing stuff. Word. Like, what time do you have between designing and mm-hmm. school and, ah. So, um, I would say you just got to get good with time management, honestly, because you're going to have your work pile up. Some of the um some of the times like around holiday season or like Ramadan season when like Ramadan came early last year and like it was like right into finals. So like I was packaging some goods and like making calls back and forth in Lagos all the time and like it's time consuming. Sometimes you just you dead gotta just like what's better right now? Like yeah. is it my business or the schoolwork? And a lot of times I chose my schoolwork. I mean, a lot of times I chose my business. And Over your schoolwork. Yeah, and it affected my schoolwork. So, like. It's a just, balance. Yeah, it's a balance. It's take. a give and take. You know, you just got to maintain that 3.0. <laughs> <Just> <laughs> Don't spy. Don't spy. Yeah. This, we ain't right. even talking about honors in this thing. We just yeah. saying pass, man. Yeah, um, grad school is just, it's all about, like, you got to pick up your gems where where it is. Like, the gems you find in the classroom, like, you don't got to take everything. At least that's what not, that's not what I'm doing. I'm not taking everything, but there is, like, there's a balance. Like I said, um, the classes I'm doing bad in, like, my HR class, like, I'm I'm doing bad in HR <laughs> within my business, you feel me? So, it's just, like, oh, I it, get it's you. a balance. So, like, everything I'm doing good in my classes is reflecting on my business. Like, my marketing, I got A's in marketing on my marketing got classes. You, my, got you. my finance classes I'm doing good in, you feel me? So, like... But that's, that's why you're in school, because the yeah. stuff that you're learning in school, you can kind of incorporate it Within into your business. business. Yeah. That's solid. And being on, the, like, the beginning of the business is, like, the foundation. So you get your foundations from the classroom, you put your foundations in the school, I mean, in the, into the business, and it's only up from there. That's, I mean, what you're saying is very true. I actually have an uncle that told me, if you build a foundation on stone, it'll last forever. But if you build a foundation on sand, It'll eventually wash away right. and that's what you're doing you building your stones up so that it'll last forever all right when you think of an animal that describes you what would you say the animal is and why mm, i'm gonna say a lion i'm not a leo though <laughs> <laughs> why but, do you say a lion um i watch and i pre and then i attack wow Say that again. Say that again. You have to say that so they can hear that one very well. You I'll do say, what? Yeah, I watch and I pre and then I attack. Like you gotta, you gotta be very observant. Um, I'm not like the loudest person. Like I don't, I'm not on IG like 24 seven. Like my you face ain't cloud is, chasing. Yeah, I'm not really on that cloud chasing level. Like I just be myself and I just, I gotta watch and then that's when I, and that's when I go in. And that's what you essentially have done for every opportunity that's been before you. You kind of just watch the scene, and then and that's when you take over. Right. Ah, y'all going to the top, oh boy. Amen. Y'all going to the <laughs> I'm top. Your ah, <laughs> y'all going to the top. <laughs> because with that kind of mentality, you know, sometimes you do have to lay low, watch the scene, and pick where it's best to go at. Yeah, to jump in. Exactly. That is really good. And as far as when you think of where you're going to be in the next 10 years mm-hmm. where do you imagine yourself um i'll probably be living in lagos ah um probably in lecky of course but, ah. i live in lecky now well oh, my, my cool. uncle has a house in lecky so like whenever i'm in lecky that's where you go yeah he barely in the house like he's it's usually <laughs> like that <laughs> yeah so like uh, i basically have crib in lecky so that's always it's so always living there. there doing what just partying i mean <laughs> 
in 10 years time oh in 10 years time nah like i feel like i'll I'll probably be on like my fourth business by then wow. like i got like a lot of tech ideas um so tech within like third world countries that not only work in nigeria but like um like other countries like spanish-speaking countries just third world in general i got a lot of, t- a lot of tech ideas so i'll be i'll definitely be putting that out there once the revenues come from different you know perfect different sources i hope you will be married with children you know? ah uh, but in the next 10 years because i'm going to advertise you 10 years that's what i look at you looking at 20 dates. 20 30 look at I'll this got, i'll have my second third wife by then all my listeners let me tell you he's lying he will only have one wife in jesus name one <laughs> if i have anything to do with it <laughs> <laughs> well like so tell us what we can look forward to seeing from you in the next coming up year 2020 like what are we what are we going to be seeing with these fella yeah, hats and stuff y'all gonna be seeing a lot more accessories because it's not only just um headwear yeah. we're just um luxury accessories um so you're gonna be seeing um duffel bags um traveling gear so that's that's like the next step travel gear and more more um more fabrics with the hats. We're going to be switching it up. Some hey, logos. Hopefully I'm we excited. get some licensing deals. You feel me? I'm excited. Yeah. I'm excited. Please, the people want to know how will they be able to get in contact with you? If they want to, like, find your gear, if they want to hit you up, maybe, mm-hmm. like, you can make custom-made stuff. Please let them know what your website is, what your social media, how they can get in contact with yeah, you. you can find me at Ogafaji, um, Ogafaji on um, IG at Agafaji on Amazon, Etsy. You could just search um, Agafaji. You're going to find me there. You can also hit inquiry at Agafaji.com. And that's it. All right, go ahead and spell Agafaji for those people that don't know. O-G-A-F-A-A-J-I. <laughs> awesome. Ah. Oh boy, you don't do me well for coming for this show. Thank You're you, like you. so you. inspirational. Keep it up. Keep it up. Good look, yeah. Guys, this has been a great episode. I hope you all will go and follow your dreams. Anybody that wants to be a designer, hit him up. Or God Faji, he will hook you up and show you the way. This is the Unconventional African, and we are out. I'm talking about the unconventional, unconventional, unconventional African.